After a year of black majority rule, there's no doubting Robert Mugabe's popularity, at least among Zimbabwe's seven million blacks. <laughs> The Rhodesian whites, the British, the Americans, and even the Russians, Robert Mugabe was the last person they expected or wanted to become the Prime Minister of an independent Zimbabwe. But in the election, as in the war, Mugabe managed to confound them all. I regard myself as a leader of a movement that fought for majority rule in the country, fought for the rights of the people, and won. This was the day last year when power actually changed from white to black hands. A day whites like Ian Smith believed would never happen. Smith had once declared that blacks would not rule Rhodesia in a thousand years. Robert Mugabe, black prime minister, is literally living proof that 250,000 whites were on borrowed time. Surprisingly, Ian Smith himself, regarded by Mugabe as a dangerous war criminal, is alive and well, and still a member of parliament. You once said that the, the crimes that Ian Smith had committed against your people were so serious that he should be brought to trial. In fact, it sounded very much, if you were quoted correctly, as though you were pronouncing a death sentence on Ian Smith. But now you say you can live with him quite peacefully. That's a drastic change of attitude. Oh, yes, yes, certainly. A man who led um, a regime which was responsible for so much uh, inhumanity, for so many massacres outside the country and within the country, in my opinion, um, had to uh, stand trial. But we committed ourselves to an agreement which recognized the principle of reconciliation, the principle of forgiveness. Uh, I don't see anything to be gained just now by trying all those we believe uh, to have committed uh, crimes. And even people who attempted to assassinate me during the elections, we have let go. They're all free now. Mugabe may be a Marxist, but there's nothing obvious about daily life in Salisbury that gets even remotely close to the stereotyped Western view of a socialist state. White Rhodesia was a rich country by African standards. The new black Zimbabwe has its problems, but they're small compared to the poverty and famine of countries around it. Before Mugabe's election, whites were terrified there'd be a bloodbath. This hasn't happened, and Mugabe says it never will. The white man takes his rightful place alongside everybody else, and we will not build here the compartments that we have known to exist in the past. There won't be uh, a minister for European affairs as there was a minister for African affairs or native affairs in the past. We would want the whites to feel that they have the same rights as the blacks, and the blacks to feel they have the same rights as the whites. Why do you think it was that so many people feared the whole idea of Robert Mugabe becoming Prime Minister of this country? And why do you think so many people left for that reason alone? I think for two reasons, mainly because they feared majority rule. Majority rule would uh, mean um, the overthrow of the uh, past system which um, entrenched white privilege. And the second reason is precisely because I had been built into a real man-eating monster, but not in eating every man, but only white men. And uh, I haven't been a cannibal. I don't intend to be. Mugabe's background is intriguing. He grew up here, in the mission village of Katama, only 50 miles from the capital, Salisbury. But in so many African ways, it could be from another world and another age. How would you describe the new independent Zimbabwe's relationship with the rest of the world because to an outsider it looks like you're trying to be all things to all men so far as the big powers are concerned. No, we are not trying to be all things to all men. We are trying to be Zimbabweans to all men. 
The international cynic might say that that sounds like a wonderful ideal, but sooner or later you're going to be sucked into one camp or the other. You no, know, we won't be lured into anybody's stomach that we refuse to be. Uh, we will certainly uh, have friends, but we will definitely refuse to become a puppet to anybody. Although Robert Mugabe has had to live down a fearsome reputation as a Marxist revolutionary, he's won the hearts and the minds of his people. And he's definitely out to hold on to this power. But in a continent bristling with tension, it's one thing to lead a revolution. It's something else again to prevent a new nation like Zimbabwe from tearing itself apart. <laughs> 